Hi, it's Olivia, and today I have a video sharing some of the children's books that I recently got, um, mostly from the library, but then a few that I have myself. Um, oh my gosh, children's books are just the best. I'm just letting you know right now, you'll be seeing me <laughs> read a lot more children's books, especially because I, I'm taking a class this semester that's on children's literature. I've only had two days of the class so far, and it's already one of my favorite things I've ever taken. And it's it, it's it's different from like all the other classes. You're paying a two hundred dollar textbook or you know, whatever it is. Instead we got a giant list of books that we're going to read this semester, but they're all kids' books and it's just so exciting. <laughs> this first one I got looks so cute. It came out recently and I, I'm already so excited for it. It's Little Leaders, Bold Woman in Black History. Uh, I think I want to say this was published last year, but I'm pretty sure I saw, uh, saw Brie Hill reading it and I had to pick it up. I had to request it from my library. I mean, just just look at it. It's so cute. I love the way, I love the animation on this one, the illustrations, I mean. This one is one of the assigned reads for class, George by Alex Gino. But there's something interesting about this because I know it is on many banned books. I like banned book lists, but I cannot remember why. Oh, I know why. The, it says, be who you are. When people look at George, they think they see a boy, but she knows she's not a boy. She knows she's a girl. I bet you can figure out already why this is a controversial and um, highly banned book in children's libraries. And that's another topic I'm so excited to talk about in class, about things that parents will censor. Things will, uh, you know, there's, there's books in history that you think are just normal like kids books that have been like outrageous sometimes when they were published because people were like this isn't what we should be showing our children like it's so interesting um this next one how could i not pick up a shell silverstein um collection of poems i can't remember which one i read there's like two or three of these kind of books you know but this one is a light in the attic and he had you know he has really unique illustrations and poem uh, poems and it's just really fun and I, I always say that one of my favorite ones is this poem, again, I, I don't remember which collection it's in, but it's called Smart, and it's about a boy who gets a dollar in allowance, and he, he goes on to say, you know, he's so smart because he changed it out for two quarters, and so on. Like, it's, it's really funny. This next one, the physical edition, looks like it has so much character, like it's so well read, which is so endearing and that's Winnie the Pooh by who a <laughs> Winnie the Pooh by who by a a mil M milney and oh my gosh I haven't even I haven't even flipped through this this was actually uh, at my school's library I didn't realize they had another floor that just had kids and, and young adult books um, and when I was walking through to try to find some books for class I was like, I should get Winnie the Pooh, read that. I, I just recently added it on my, t on my uh, TBR on Goodreads. This looks like it's going to be a good time. Man, I'm so excited. Next, <laughs> I got Olivia. Gotta say, maybe this is a bit controversial. I think Peppa Pig is better than this pig. But, anyway. Um, this one, you'll notice, is in Spanish, and I really wish that I was bilingual. I so terribly wish I was bilingual. You know, I live in Southern California, like, people speak Spanish all over the place, and I don't, but I figure reading a children's book that I know well in Spanish could help me out, you know? Next one I have is Separate is Never Equal by Sylvia, uh, not by Sylvia, it's about Sylvia Mendez and her family's fight for desegregation by Duncan Tenatia. Um, I... I am surprised that I only recent, just recently learned about Sylvia Mendez, but I, I found this while browsing the aisles. This next one I picked up is Cultures of the World Tanzania. They have like this Cultures of the World one for, I, th I think they have it for every country. Um, and I would love to learn a little bit. I just picked like two or three random countries and yeah. I would love I would love to expand my knowledge of, and, and look at I feel like this this I'll learn more from this than in many other books that I read. This is another one of those like around the world books, not the same um, collection or whatever, but this one's on Indonesia. This next one I am positive you have heard about is Where the Wild Things Are by Marie Sendak and my, my professor for this class. He says that this there's like so much more to the story that we'll be diving in. This is our like first assigned read, and I I did buy this one for that reason. I, I think we might own it, but I think it's like in boxes of storage in our house. So 
Oh well. Then I got this random, because you know kids books also have like a bunch of autobiographies. There will be a bunch of little like, learn about... blank. <laughs> so, um, and this one is Toni Morrison's Journey to Freedom, the African American Library. Actually, I don't think that's the title. It's just down there. Maybe that's like the collection of this. But, yeah, caught my interest. This next one I picked up is Come On Rain by Karen Hess and John Muth. The John Muth is the illustrator. It just looks so cute. That's that's like the only reason why I got this. I looked at it, I was like, how beautiful. This next book is She Persisted by Chelsea Clinton, you may have heard of her, and illustrated by Alexandra Boyger, 13 American Women Who Changed the World. This is my own copy. I got it when I was at BookCon last year. Is anyone else going this year? I think I'm, I'm pretty positive I'm going this year. Um, and I got this, and I got the chance to meet her, have her sign this book, and just, wow, it was a really cool experience, and I, so I've already read this. this. next book is Esperanza Rising. I, this is just a book that I picked up because I've seen it for so long. I remember seeing it in the library in middle school, I think in elementary school, um, just, I like passed it for so long. I, I see it, I've seen it so many times, I figured, might as well pick it up. These last two books are some of my favorites. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned them before on this channel, especially this one, which is The Stinky Cheese Man and Other Fairly Stupid Fairly ta Fairy Tales. And I love the back. Um, this one, again, is my own copy, and I can't recommend it. Enough. It's so quirky and different, and so it's so unique and this is oh I turned right to my favorite page I always talk about this page you see how the font just gets like increasingly tiny that was my favorite thing to read repeatedly um when I was little and you know it was a little bit controversial because it has the word stupid in there that's a mean word for some kids you know that's dang <laughs> and this last book I have is the ever wonderful the polar express and the movie that goes along with it is one of my favorite movies, too. So, there's there's really not much I can say about this except that I love it. And the animation in the movie, they got it, like, they copied it straight from the book. Like, it, that, this looks like the movie, you know? It's, it's so cool. And that's always been one of my favorite scenes and favorite parts of the book, where, um, they're, all the kids are on the train on the way to the North Pole warms my heart. That's what all these books do. I would love to know some of your favorite children's books, if you have some popular ones that you've never read before, anything. And I will see you in another video. Bye.